Welcome to Dunwoody College of Technology, Mechanical Engineering. This is MENG 3250 Heat Transfer. We'll be working through problem 1374 from Bergman, Intro to Heat Transfer. We're told that we have a radiative heat heater that consists of a bank of ceramic tubes with internal heating elements. They have a diameter of 20 millimeters, and they're separated by center center spacing of 50 millimeters. We have a re-radiating surface behind the tubes, shown up here. And we'll refer, re recall back what that means again in a minute. And we're asked to find the net radiative heat flux to the heated material down here at the bottom when the heating tubes with the emissivity of 0 0.87 are maintained at 1,000 Kelvin and the material with the lower emissivity is at 500 Kelvin. So let's recall just for a minute what re-radiating re is before we get into the problem-solving approach. Re-radiating, this means that all incident radiation is radiated again, right? It could be absorbed momentarily and then readmitted, or it could be reflected, but it's insulated on the back side. There's really no convection going on, so all the radiation incident on this guy is going to be coming back the other direction. So let's see, what do we have for knowns? We have known tube spacing and size with given temperature. Known emissivities and is there anything else that we know here? We have the re-radiating re surface. I think we're good with that. What are we looking for? We're looking for the heat flux net to material, right? Trying to figure out how much heat we get by radiation on this surface down here. So our schematic is basically what we've got up there. I'll draw a separate one here just for one little section. So I'll just simplify it down to two tubes. We've got a re-radiating surface back here, some material down here. These are 50 millimeters apart. And the spacing, the tube diameter is 20 millimeters. If we look at it from a thermal circuit perspective, we have that emissivity radiation, uh, resistance, excuse me. This would be our, our tube to the surface. And then once we get to that surface, right, radiation can we're looking for how do we get over here, right? So I could get there directly from one to two and then radiate again there. So this is going to be my surface or material. This is the tube surface. Material surface. Or I could go from this tube surface, I could get radiation that hits this and then comes from that back down to the surface. So I have kind of two radi radiative resistances in parallel there. So I have my re-radiating surface and then another resistance back that way. All right, and all of this we're looking for a Q net over here that's going into my, my material. So let's talk about our assumptions just for a moment. Well, we've talked about assumptions for this section. So we're going to assume that we're gray. Also assume that there's no directional pieces to this, so we have diffuse surfaces. That's really the only, only assumption that we need to make. So as we look at this, if we group all of these tubes together, we really have essentially a two surface enclosure here because this back wall is basically just a, a reflection. So we really only have surface one and surface two. Looking back in our in our text, we have, well, let's get our analysis heading up here. Looking back in our text, we have Q1 for a two surface enclosure closure equals negative Q2 is going to be sigma T1 to the fourth minus T2 to the fourth. It's a black body emission. 
over our resistances, one epsilon one over epsilon one A one plus one over A one F one two plus one minus epsilon two over epsilon one A two F one two. I might be adding that in there. I think it's just I think it's just this bit. So as we look at this re resistance network, it looks a little different than that. Here, if, if I may, I'll just uh, kind of cross these out for a moment. So if we're looking at it for this design, just be essentially getting rid of this re-radiating surface. We can add that back in by expanding this term to include resistances in parallel. for the re-radiating. So we'll do that here in a moment. So what does that look like if I if I expand that out? I'm going to see Q1 equals the same stuff that I had before. Sigma t1 to the fourth minus t2 to the fourth, oh, fourth over 1 minus epsilon 1 over epsilon 1 a1. That's that material resistance. Plus, now this is our combined resistance. So we're they're in parallel, so we have to add the inverse of the inverses. So before, we would have had 1 over a1 f1 2 plus, now we're going to take the inverse of these guys, 1 over a1 F1R, that's the part that's going to our re-rating surface in the top, plus 1 over A2F2R, that's the re-rating surface to our material surface. We have to add the inverse of those. Uh, yep, and then plus 1 minus epsilon 2 over, oh, that should have been epsilon 2 up here, sorry. Epsilon to a2. I've wrote it backwards, but it's the same mathematical difference. So that's what we're getting to. So what do we need? Well, we need some of these view factors, right? So what do we know? F12, we're going to go back from table 13.1. Let me flip over there just quickly. Yep, 13.1. We find that F i j from table 13.1 is 1 minus quantity 1 minus d over s squared to the 1 half plus d over s tan to the negative 1 of s squared minus d squared over d squared square root to one half. And the important thing to note here is this needs to be in radians. So we'll get the wrong value. We get something 30 degrees or something and then we'd be multiplying that by a number. Not good plan. So with that, F12 we can get directly. One minus one minus D is 20 or 50. Since it's a division, I don't need to convert that to millimeters, uh, from millimeters to meters. Squared uh, to the one half plus 20 over 50, 10 to the negative one of 50 squared minus 20 squared over 20 squared square root. There we go. So I plug that in. What I find, I found that F12 equals zero point five four seven one eight five so that's what we have going there that's also the same as what we'd have going to the other surface right so it's kind of symmetric about this so if I'm looking up here what I have going this direction is the same as I'd have going the other direction they're gonna see the same thing so it's also going to be equals F R1 F21 should be the inverse of that. It's going to be 1 minus F12 equals 
zero point four five two four five two eight one five. Now it's also going to be the same as f r two. We'd be getting from here to there. Let's see. I think we've got that. And there we go. So I think we can plug these guys in there. I should have called this F1R, excuse me. And this one F, F2R. So we can plug those guys up into here. F1, 2, we have that direct. It's the same as that one. So we should be able to get Q1 now. But we also want to find Q1 the flux, right? So Q1 over area is going to be that. What's the area that we're going to use? Well, we're just going to take a little chunk of this area and take this segment here. So what do I have there? So it's area 1. Let me, let me call that area of the material. So we're going to have for the material A2, it's going to be S, so 0 0.05 meters times whatever length or depth into this page we're doing. A1, it's our tube surface, area of the tubes. What is that? If I look up here, I've got pi over D, divided, pi times D over 2, plus pi times D over 2, or pi D, one whole circumference of that guy. Was 0 0.02 times pi. And our back wall, AR, it's the same as S, so 0 0.05. So with that, I can plug it all into my equation here. So back up into to this guy. And we should be able to get our Q1 net. So what do I get with that? I get Stefan Boltzmann, 1,000 to the fourth minus 500 to the fourth, all over 1 minus 0 0.87 times area, 0 0.05, divided by 0 0.87 times pi, 0 0.02, so first resistance, plus dividing by my area, so I'm going to get 0 0.05 here. And underneath I get 0 0.05 times F12, which was 0 0.547185, plus, now here's my inverse coming, 1 divided by 0 0.05 times same view factor, 0 0.547185 plus, sorry, am I right on parentheses? I think I need one more parenthesis here. Plus 1 divided by 0 0.05 times the inverse of that, or the reciprocal of that guy, 0 0.4528. Uh, 28, I 1 5 to the 1 half, not to the negative 1 half, to the 1 half. Negative 1. Oh, goodness gracious. Sorry about that. It's going to be negative 1. Inverse of that whole thing. Still underneath here, plus the last material resistance, 1 minus epsilon 2, which is 0 0.26 over 0 0.26. So we divide by that area. So we multiply by the area of that, divide by the area of, of the tubes to get that cancel out. This one knows the same area on both, so it just canceled out. So if I carry that through, plugging that in my calculator, I find 12.59 kilowatts per meter squared, or Q1. 12.6 kilowatts per meter squared. So the trick here, 
looking back at our solution, was realizing this re-radiating surface can make this like a two-body enclosure if we include this resistance in, in this whole resistance network. And so we can do that because we know all the properties about that re-radiating surface are going to be acting like a black body. So all the in radiation incident on it is going to be emitted again at the same thing. It's not going anywhere. There's no heat flux into or out of that surface. It's just net zero on that surface. So I hope that was helpful. We can pick up again with some review for, for the final, and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.